Hey, what's up guys? So I just recorded about half this tutorial and then went back to check the footage and realized that I didn't have my sound on. So um, hopefully I'll do it a little bit better this time. So today we're going to be focusing on creating this apple from scratch in Cinema 4D using nothing but noise generators. So this is what the final product looks like. I'm not going to go over how I created the floor materials or um, the water droplets, just the apple. So I'm going to start fresh <laughs> again, and let's close up the Octane view just because we don't need it yet. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up some reference pictures of apples because that's just the only way you're going to know what an apple looks like. So I think this is a nice one to model off of, to base the model off of, and then um, sort of take the ideas for the texture from this one or this one. And so I'm just going to drag this over to my other monitor so it's out of the way, but I'm going to be constantly looking at it while we're actually sculpting it. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring a loft into the scene, and then I'm going to bring a circle spline. So make the circle a child of the loft, and then an apple is not 200 centimeters. So we're going to lower this to something like 12. <laughs> and that's just a little bit more accurate to the actual size of an apple. Actually, centimeters to feet. Let's Google this. So one centimeter is 0 0.03 feet. So let's see how big 12 centimeters would be. Okay, so 12 is good. And then I'm going to change the plane to XZ. And now I'm just going to hold control and then drag this up here to create another circle and then drag it up. And that's just how we're going to create the basic shape of the apple. So now I'm going to scale this up and bring up my reference picture while I'm doing this. And then the great thing about modeling an apple is that no two apples look exactly alike. So you don't have to worry about precision per se. Um, every apple is unique. Okay, so there's the basic shape of our apple, but obviously it doesn't look like an apple yet because it's too perfect. Um, let's close up our loft first and then hit C to make it editable. And now we're going to go into our sculpting mode and I'm going to select the inflate tool. And now with the object selected, um, I'm going to increase my size to 100. And now I'm just going to, while looking at my reference picture, um, start making some imperfections in this apple. Um, so sort of like puffing up the top a little bit, like so. And now let's go back into our startup view. And now I'm going to apply a taper effect to this. And make sure you make the taper a child. Oop, let's delete these two caps. So make the taper a child of your loft and then select fit to parent. And now if we start increasing the strength, you see it creates, it makes the top smaller. It sort of squishes it in. So we actually want the bottom to do that, not the top. So. Let's go over to our coordinates and rotate it by 180 degrees, and that's way too much. So let's go back to our object and do it somewhere around 15%. And now I'm going to increase the curvature. And our apple looks kind of fat now. So I'm just going to take the loft and stretch it back up like that. Maybe a little bit down. Something like that. Alright. And so actually I'm gonna take this back into sculpting mode 
because this bottom edge is bothering me. Um, this one isn't sticking out enough, or this one's sticking out too much. So I'm just going to even them out by pulling that out a little bit more. Sort of so that we have this like four feet that are sort of defined at the bottom of the apple. Maybe like, like that. That's better. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to startup. Cool. And I'm just going to keep adjusting this until I'm happy. Okay, so the next step is creating the apple material. But before we do that, I'm going to select these traffic lights just so that our deformer boxes go away and they're not in our way. And now I'm going to go up to my octane view, which I just is just a user setting that I created, and enable octane, um, and then create a new material. So if we double click on this, and if you're not using octane, you can still follow along with this as long as you're using Cinema 4D, because we're going to put a layer shader in here, which is just a Cinema 4D thing. And then within that, click on shader, and the first thing I'm going to add is a gradient. So think of this as the base color of our apple. So I'm going to change this to vertical and rotate it 180. And now I'm going to select our darker color and I'm going to bring up my reference picture. And then I'm going to grab my color picker and pick somewhere from near the bottom of the apple and click OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the top and pick a color from the top of the apple. And so now we have a nice gradient going from bottom to top and it looks nice. So I'm actually just going to adjust this until I'm a little happier with it. So I'm just going to decrease the saturation a little bit, just because I feel like it, it looks fake if it's too saturated, in my opinion. So that's good. And now I'm going to increase the turbulence to start with 50% and go from there. See, that that looks like too much. So let's maybe bring it down to 20%. So it's more of a subtle effect. And I like that. So that's the base color of our apple. The next thing I'm going to add in is the freckles. So we're going to add a noise layer on top of that. And let's go from noise to Veroni 1. And now bring the high clip down to something like 35%. So that just leaves us with these little specks. And now I'm going to invert the white and the black. So just like that. And now we, it leaves us with the white specks. And they're pretty big right now, so I'm actually going to decrease the scale to 5%. And changes from white to more of a orangish white, an off-white, maybe something like that. And this is just all preference, it's whatever looks good to you. And now I'm going to change this blending mode from the noise to screen. So that gets rid of the black and it leaves us with those freckles on top. Now you can see it looks pretty pixelated right now. Um, it doesn't look very high resolution. That's because of Octane. So the way you fix that is you go into Octane Settings, the Settings tab, Cinema 4D Shaders, and the render size is set to 128 by 128, which is really low. And the reason it's low by default is because Octane has to turn the Cinema 4D Shaders into a bitmap before it can render it. And the higher the resolution, basically the longer that takes to do. So right before we hit render, I'm going to bump this up to maybe 1,000. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at 256, and that will give us a little bit higher quality. So you can see they got smaller, um, just so we can see a little bit better what we're doing. So the next thing that an apple has is yellow, these yellow streaks. So you can see it's not red in all parts. Sometimes it gets yellowish And these pictures. Ooh, that does not look like a good apple, but this is another good example. Um, so we're going to add that in by creating another noise shader, you guessed it. <laughs> and I'm going to, actually, we could rename these. So I'm going to rename this Freckles. And I'm going to rename this one Yellow Streaks. Okay. So I'm going to click on Yellow Streaks, and I'm going to change it from the regular noise to Turbulence. And... We're going to change the colors now from white to whatever yellow shade you, your heart desires. 
Um, so I'm actually going to use the color picker for this too and pull up a picture that I want to sample it from. So let's say I'm going to sample it from this one. And I'm going to grab my color picker and select that shade of yellow and hit OK. And now I'm going to up the scale to something like 500%. And now it looks more like a smear. Um, it's, it looks more accurate. So now I'm going to decrease the high clip and increase the low clip. And actually, I need to invert these. So I'm going to make so I'm actually going to make this black. And then I need to resample this color like that. Let's make it a little bit more saturated. All right, like that. And now we have something like that. So now if we go back up, we can change the blending mode to screen. And now our apple has these yellow streaks on it. And if that's too much for you, you can just click on yellow streaks and go back in here and keep messing with the settings until you're happy. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add in another shader, but this time we're adding in a gradient. And the purpose of this gradient is going to be to help blend in everything we've added in so far. So I'm gonna click on the gradient and make it vertical and rotate it 180 degrees. And I'm gonna change this from black to something like a dark red, okay? And then I'm just gonna slide this over so that it covers most of the apple except for the very top. And now I'm gonna go back up and change the blending mode to multiply. And you can see what that did was it added another layer of color on top of the freckles and streaks so that they don't stand out all the time so at the bottom you can see they start to disappear and at the top they're more apparent and then I'm just gonna blend this by bringing the opacity down to maybe like 40 percent somewhere around there whatever looks good maybe even a little bit less like 35 and that's just gonna help um, glue everything together so the last thing I'm going to add is you guessed it another noise shader but I promise this is the last one. So we're gonna click on it and go into noise. Actually, we're gonna keep that noise. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, let's change the scale though to 5%. And the purpose of this is to add a little bit of roughness to the overall texture so that it doesn't look as clean. And I'm going to change the white to more of a purpley pink color. So similar to red, but a little bit off. Um, I'm gonna desaturate it maybe something like that. So it's kind of like a, a pinkish purple. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And let's go back out. And we're gonna set the blending mode of this one to overlay. So now it sort of adds this purplish hue to the whole thing, which I've noticed apples tend to have. And then it also adds a little bit of roughness to the overall texture. And then I'm just gonna bring the blending down to maybe somewhere around 50%, just so it's not as strong. And that's basically how I create the Apple material. The next thing we're gonna do is just create a simple material for the stem. So I'm just gonna create another octane material. I'm gonna leave it diffuse, and in the diffuse channel, we're just gonna make this a dark brown color. Maybe something like that, desaturate it a little bit, hit okay, and then I'm just gonna apply that right onto the stem. And that actually looks like it might be too dark. So I'm gonna lighten that up. Like that, and that looks better. The next thing you can do is add in an HDRI sky. So the way you do that is just by going down to objects and HDRI environment. And then you can pull up your handy dandy um, content browser in Cinema 4D if you don't have your own HDRI environments, which I don't really, I just kind of browse the internet to find them. So then you can pull in any of these in the content browser. Um, this is a nice one. I think this is what I actually used in my Apple render. So I'm gonna um, click on this image texture node and then drag it directly into the HDRI box, like so. And now we have an HDRI. Cool. And one of the final things you can do is um, select your loft and put it in 
a subdivision surface see because you can sort of see um, the polygon edges a little bit still and so we're just gonna put the loft right in there and that just smoothed it out immediately boom done so now that we're ready to render I'm going to increase my render size for this texture to 1024 by 1024 and when I hit this button you're gonna see that it's gonna take a little bit longer to calculate so it's exporting materials and there you go so that actually that looks way better now right now we, we have a high resolution Apple one last thing that I just want to show you is how to set up a basic camera in Octane so if you just go down to Octane camera right here boom you got your Octane camera or you can create a new Cinema 4D camera like you normally do and then just apply an Octane camera tag to it and then um, you can pick your focus by unselecting autofocus and then the pick focus selection and then you click on that make sure your camera is selected first and now you can lower the f-stop to give you some nice juicy depth of field and now now it looks a lot more convincing huh now it looks like a real apple so there it is i hope you found something informative or helpful from this tutorial that you can use in your own projects um i got inspiration for this from a tutorial that i watched on how to create a pickle from scratch using um, noise generators in Cinema 4D. So I'll link that somewhere. I want to credit the guy who made it because he, he taught me basically how to layer things um, to create a convincing texture. So I just want to share that with you guys and I'll see you next time.